Okay. Right. So um, last time I was uh, still towards the first, the end of the first page. If you like here again in this paragraph, he's uh, the narrator. I mean, Huck is telling us about uh, in details about Miss uh, um, Watson. Uh, again, Miss um, um, Watson here as an important uh, character because she is the she is the uh, mistress uh, uh, who owns um, uh, the the slave Jim. And again, to see her as an example of a white woman uh, owning a slave uh, in in reality. And I think this is uh, again, as I said, to uh, highlight the. Uh, importance importance just a second somebody is asking me something here yeah. yeah sorry for the interruption uh, and again we get the idea here from this narrative that she's really again is is a nice old woman, a nice, uh, again, caring woman. But you see, um, that's nothing to do with, uh, with having the slave, you know, because we know that, um, uh, you know, uh, she wants to, um, uh, again, to take care of her life, her, her uh, again, with, to take care of Huck himself uh, in, the same, in the same fashion. Uh, again, she's not to blame again for the way that she's treating the slave because that's that's uh, the whole thing about uh, the white the white slave relationship in this uh, in this novel, as we know here. Notice, for example, the way she always takes care of him. Don't you put your feet up there, Huckleberry, and don't. Don't scrunch up like that, Huckleberry. Set up straight, Huckleberry, and so on. You know, she wants to, again, Miss Watson here, uh, both in the same way uh, like like Miss um, Douglas or uh, the widow Douglas, you know, the both women here. Notice she said she's a tolerable, smil, slim old maid. Again, you know, notice here, old maid, because she's, Again, he said, you know, uh, miss, uh, again, uh, to, to highlight, again, again, the society here. And again, notice, then she told me all about the bad place. And I said, I wished I was there. She got mad then, but I didn't mean no harm. All I wanted was to go somewhere. All I wanted was a change. I weren't particular. Again, you see here, um, in in this in this situation again always when we pay attention to to the language that he's using she said all about the would have to do there was to go around all day long with a harp and sing forever and ever so i don't think much of it but i never said so i asked her if she reckoned tom sawyer would go there and she said not to be or not by a considerable sight I was glad about that because I wanted him and me to be together. Miss Watson, she kept, um, you know, pecking at me and it got tiresome and gloesome. Again, you know, you know, he wants to tell us I was not happy in this life because I want to be free. I don't want to get the education that they are giving me. Again, to highlight his wild character and his lazy character. He wants to be... Um, outside free and to run around with his gangsters as uh, as we, really we know and this is really uh, to highlight again the the differences between the hard working american white american society and the lazy the lazy um, you know side of the working uh, or if you like of the american society and i think this is always highlighted in in many many um, american texts so here we get all the time, you know, chapter by chapter, the idea that uh, that Huckleberry is a lazy, absolutely lazy, funny, 
uh, you know, wild boy who cares nothing whatsoever about life uh, and about how to get better because he already has uh, this money again. You know, he has it as a result of uh, maybe, 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 you know, of, um, he said he got it as a treasure somewhere, you know, but, but you can say it can be said that it's taken maybe illegally or uh, in a sort of uh, like uh, robbery, you know, fashion in a way. So he said, I don't want to be um, with anyone. I want to be lonely. I want to be free. I don't want education. I don't want to learn uh, the prayers and all this carry on, you know. Uh, and he said that, you know, many, many times. Um, and he highlighted this. He said, you know, I hate this kind of education they are giving me. I, it makes me feel lonely. It makes me feel like dead. You know, and I think this is uh, to some extent is to say that um, uh, to highlight again, as I said, the sharp contrast uh, between the hardworking, dreamy, hardworking American uh, society. Again, he said, I got so downhearted and scared. I did wish I had some company. Pretty soon a spider went crawling up my shoulder and i flipped it off and it lit in the candle and before i could budge it was all sh you know shriveled uh, up and and so on you know he goes on and on at the end of this chapter he said i sat down again shaking all over and got out my pipe for a smoke and for the house was all as still as death now and so the widow wouldn't know you see, so this is it. He's highlighting again his wife behavior, you know, smoking and using his pipe. And again, as I said, um, you know, the, the, the writer here is, you know, giving us this picture to say that this is a wild boy. You know, this is a lazy, terrible, wild boy, you know, who needs really, who needs really education. And of course, the contrast is to see his father. His father is worth, you know absolutely worse when he um, you know wanted to take all his money of course and again maybe his his mother could be could be as we say you know uh, uh, you know who has abandoned him if not dead you know so that's why he was always feeling that he wants to leave and the next chapter chapter two we see this again we went tiptoeing along a path amongst the trees back towards the end of the widow's garden, stooping down so as to, so as the branches wouldn't scrap or scrape our heads. When we was passing by the kitchen, I felt over a roof, sorry, a root and made a noise. Again, notice the funny English he said, uh, when we was passing, you know. Again, as I said, I don't need to... Uh, again tell you that this is of course always the irregular and really funny grammatical english that he's using so here he's telling us how he's running away how he ran away from the widow and her sister because he's he said you know he he does not want uh, to stay so they were he was running away with um, with uh, tom uh, to take jim again to to uh, to go to Jim to take him. We scrouched down and laid still. Miss Watson's bigger nigger named Jim was sitting in the kitchen door. We could see him pretty clear because there was a light behind him. He got up and stretched his neck out about a minute listening. Then he says, who da? You know, who da? Who's there? Who's that or whatever? You know, again, you know, if you want to uh, remember, Jim speaks very, very strange English. Again, as I said, this is to do with colloquial English. As we shall see many examples later, uh, it's the slave black uh, community sort of use of the language. 
So here, as I said, in this chapter, they are trying to, to take away with them Jim, to run away. The three of them, uh, as I said, because he said they wanted to join the uh, robbery or the robbers or you like the gang of robbers. And here he's telling us he listened, he listened some more. Then he came or he come tiptoeing down and stood right between us. We could touch Sorry, we could attach him nearly. Here, here we could ah, uh, really the word here ah, uh, it means we could have, uh, we could have touched him nearly. Again, I told you this uh, funny uh, English here. We could ah, uh, touched him means we could have touched him. Well, likely it was minutes and minutes. Again, it was, uh, uh, you know, ungrammatical English again there weren't a sound there was not a sound and we all uh, we all there so close together there was a place on my ankle that got so to to itching but I doesn't look at this language here I doesn't scratch it you know again really very funny uh, English Please, um, when you when you read all this uh, all the time, as I say, I want you to pay attention to that and not to worry about the the um, try to correct it. You know, try to correct it into good English. I doesn't scratch it, or maybe I didn't scratch it, or I didn't have the time to scratch it. You know, but there's nothing called doesn't. You know, I doesn't. You know, we don't say I does, you know, again, this is really very funny English, isn't it? And then my ear began to itch, again, begun or began or has begun. And next time or next my back right between my shoulders seemed like I'd die if I couldn't scratch. You know, he's telling us all this. I think it's really very funny to see uh, how he's, um, you know, telling us details about uh, the idea that they wanted to um, disappear from this place. Notice, say, who's you? Where, where, where is you? You know, where, where, where is you? Where, where is, again, where is, where is you? You know, where are you? Not where is you, you know? Of course, this is, again, uh, you know, the slave saying this. Dog my cats if I didn't hear something, something, Something means something, maybe. Something means something. You know, dog my cats. Again, this is really funny to say. If, if means if. You know, as if to say, you know, he's using a sort of swearing language. Dog my cats, you know. So this is a kind of swearing, which is really, again, very funny. And he tells us more and more about that, you know, notice here. So he sat down out on the ground between me and Tom. He leaned his back up against a tree and stretched his legs out till one of them most touched one of mine. My nose began to itch. It itched. It itched till, it, it, uh, till the tears um, come into my eyes, but I doesn't scratch, you know. Remember, this is, this is uh, Huck narrating. Remember, all this novel is narrated by Huck, by the boy who is, as I said, you know, character, character narrator. Again, you know, um, at least, at least his uh, speech is somehow understandable. You know, unlike, um, unlike uh, you know, Jim, for example. Then it began to itch in the inside. Next, I got to itching underneath. I didn't know how I was going to sit still. This, mis this miserableness went on as much as six or seven minutes, but it seemed a sight longer than that i was itching in 11 different places now i reckoned i couldn't stand it more more and more and in a minute longer but i set my teeth hard 
and got ready to try. Just then Jim began to breathe heavy. Next he began to snore and then I was pretty soon comfortable again. You know, you say, come on, what's this? Of course, he's telling us, remember, this is a novel. You know, he's telling us a lot of details. You may say, why the details? I, again, I say, well, because it's a novel. You know, he wants to draw to us all this detailed, you know, um, situation to tell us about the kind of life that you will see. And there are a lot of funny, really amazing detail um, in, in this to understand and to laugh and to mock the way they were living. In the next uh, few uh, paragraphs, you can see Tom telling us more and more about this, uh, uh, this moment of running away, trying to escape, because remember, they were now moving out of the place because they want to run away to escape into freedom. And again, notice, when we was 10 foot off, Tom whispered to me and um, wanted to tie Jim to a tree for fun. But I said, no, he might wake, he might wake and make a disturbance. And then they would find out I weren't in. You know, so again, notice here the tricks that they play on Jim, poor Jim, because he's a black man, he's a slave. And both of them white boys, so here they play the even the differences between being white. They, two boys, white, and Jim as the slave, they want to tie him and to, you know, make fun of him. And I think this is, again, part of the racial segregation and racial discrimination, even, uh, you know, even if it's for fun. But this is it. Um, again, the idea... Uh, he said, this is how we went. The next uh, paragraph, again here, I highlighted a lot of this, again, because I want you really to feel the novel. As soon as Tom was back, we cut along the path around the garden fence and by and by fetched up to on the steep top of the hill, the other side of the house. Tom said he slipped Jim's hat off, off his head and hung it on a um, limb right over him, and Jim stirred a little, but he didn't wake. Afterwards, Jim said, and uh, sorry, Jim said the witches bewitched him. Again, notice here, bewitched him. Because, you know, today we, the word bewitch, we use it as one word, which is one verb, as if to say, you know, if you believe in witches and in magic and witchcraft, Again, here he said that maybe he was bewitched by a witch. Again, to suggest here or to draw the attention of how people really believe in witches and all this carry on, which is again, I think, is very funny. And uh, at, at that time, of course, before Mark Twain, you remember if, if you were with me in, um, in uh, uh, the previous time in, in uh, Survey 1, we have seen so many examples about witches and about, you know, how American society at that time, you know, all the religious concepts and attitudes and practices and all this um, was really very funny in a way. And when they really did believe in witches and especially, especially how, for example, the story we have studied uh, by um, Hawthorne, you know, uh, and I think Hawthorne novels and short stories, I think uh, a lot of them talk about witches. And, and Hawthorne did actually in real life in his own city, which is called Salem. And Salem village or the little town, you know, where, where the witches were, were trialed and killed. Nine women were trialed for witchcraft. And I think this is, uh, I have said that to those of you who were with me, in, and I'm sure you, you must have studied this, uh, all of you, in, in Survey 1. Okay? So here, again, to say, to connect the relationship between blacks and witches, you know, here again, I think this could be intentional or this could be racial, or one side of racial discrimination between the two 
um, the two the two sides, if you like, here of American society, the blacks and the whites. Next time Jim, Jim told it, he said they wrote him down to New Orleans. New, you know, he means the witches. And again, I don't know if this is, you know, again, I think this is the idea to say about the question of um, witches and witchcraft. And after that, every time he told it, he spread it all more and more, till by and by he said they rode him uh, all over the world and tired him most to death, and his back was all over saddle boils. <laughs> you know, again, you know, this is the funny, I think, elaboration by Mark Twain to see how people think and talk of of you know, they talk of witchcraft uh, and, and they mock, if you like, I think they mock really um, the boy Jim or the man slave Jim about it. Again, he said Jim was monstrous, proud about it, and he got so he wouldn't hardly notice the other niggers. Niggers would come miles to hear Jim tell them or tell about it, means about his story being when he was bewitched by a witch or by witches. And he was more looked up to than any nigger in that country. Again, you can see here how many times, how many times really here, as I said, um, Mark Twain used the word nigger and niggers and, you know, blacks and so on. As I said, many critics thought maybe this word was a bad word to use but of course at that time maybe it was not bad so um again to some extent this is racially meant this is racially intended to say look how whites talk about what black people stranger strange niggers would stand with their mouths open and look at him or lick him look him all over same as it same as if he was a wonder. Niggers, niggers is always talking about witches. Look at it again. Niggers is, you know, niggers plural and is singular. You know, this is again very funny English. And remember, this is Jim. Remember, Jim is saying this to us. Uh, sorry, sorry, not Jim. I mean, I mean, uh, Huck, the narrator, the narrator talking about Jim. So we get all this idea again from about Jim from a white man from a white boy who is who is making fun of him or maybe ridiculing him niggers he said niggers always talking about witches in the dark by the kitchen fire but whenever once was talking and letting on to know all about such things Jim would happen in and says ha hmm what do you know about, about witches? And that nigger was corked up and had to take a back, uh, a back seat. Jim always kept that five center piece round his neck with a string and said it was a charm the devil give to him with his own hands. <laughs> really, the, the reason I highlighted this to you is again to see to tell you how how much American society really how much they believe they believe in this crazy thing about witches okay doctor hello yeah uh, why the narrator Huck uh, makes lots of uh, grammar grammatical mistakes um, he's white and white well, um, were educated, not like the black. Yeah, but you see, this is Wafa, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Wafa, yeah. this is, um, remember, remember, uh, Huck is a young boy now. He, he's not educated. He is not educated. He is not educated and he is young. Yes, he's white, yes, but he's a wild boy. He's not educated, he's not religious, he doesn't care about society, he doesn't care about education. 
and so on. So he really doesn't care about language, whether he speaks correct English or not. So really, that's the reason. That's the only reason that to tell us this is how the terrible, careless, careless, you know, poor people, if you like, poor, careless, poor, working class, maybe poor, working class society speak. Yes, this is the language of the working class, white working class society. Jim is a young boy who is maybe an orphan, who is abandoned by his mother, maybe his mother is dead, whose father is terrible, his father is a drunkard, his father is a bad father, and therefore, you know, uh, we can say he is a terribly, terribly, first, sorry, terribly working class young boy who doesn't care about language at all. So that's why he, he speaks very, very, um, you know, uh, terrible English. That's why, not, not, uh, not, um, not to say that he's educated and he's civilized in that fashion. Okay? Yeah. Now, uh, I, was, uh, I was going to say, that do, do, I think, and I asked my students last time about this, and many of them said yes. Yeah, what do you think? Um, what do you think? Do you believe that there are witches in, in real life, maybe? Yes, I think. Yes. Really? Do you really believe that there are witches and there are, you know, Do you do you people here in Oman believe that that people can be can be bewitched? Yes, I think yes, doctor. <laughs> Come on, all of you say yes. My God, it is a mission uh, in the Quran. I know, I know. Of course, it's mentioned in the Quran. Yeah, of course. But you know, in real life, I mean, ah. Uh, uh, I think there are, but the how we uh, we believe on them is not correct. Like uh, they can't catch somebody and make him a slave and so on. Like many people believe, I don't believe on those things. Yeah. Any more ideas, Doctor? I think that. Uh... The idea of witching between e uh, West and East is uh, totally different because they believe uh, believe it as a magic or switching uh, something to to another ship. But <laughs> as Arabs or as Omanis, we believe that uh, is affect uh, also the the people maybe. Uh, it can shape the uh, the the human being to to a tool or to a, a tree or it, it, uh, he or she can hide it uh, or can be a, a slave for 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 the uh, for the the witches. Really? Yes. You know, last I'm, I'm, I want to tell you a real story. Last year, I taught, I was teaching this in class actually, and one of the boys said to me because they were saying, they were saying here in Oman there are places. There is maybe they said there is a place in Oman, and uh, they say there are witches and um, wizards there. He said there are wizards and witches, you know, both male and female, because for the, for a male. For a male, we say wizards, and for female, we say witches. And he said, yes, there are, there is a place in Oman, and he said, Bahla, he said. Is that correct? Do you, do you believe that? Yes. Bahla and Nizwa. No. 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 <laughs> yes. Yes. No. yes. Yes, doctor. But we don't believe that, actually. <laughs> And he, and he know he told me he and he was really uh, he was really honest and straight in the class. He said to me, "Doctor, I said one day I will go there and check 
He said, doctor, don't ever go there. If you go there, you will not come back. Really? I'm from Bahla. I'm from Bahla and I don't speak <laughs> like thank you very much. Yeah, what do you think? Is, is that true? I think it's, I think they hear old story from old women and men. <laughs> they have, they have, and, they have and you, are, you are from Bahla and you think you are from Bahla and you say, there are there are nothing like that. No wizards walking around the streets. No. <laughs> well. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I think Sorry? they say. I think they say something like that to make people afraid or to say something amazing and exciting to attract the people attention. Something exactly. like that. Yeah, but... Exactly. You know, that boy, honestly, this is what he said to me and I was in class. I said, come on. I'm, um, I, I have never heard of this before. And I think I will go one day to, to and visit the area because, you see, I don't know a lot of Oman. And the, the boy said, please, doctor, don't go there. You'll not come back. I said, what? What do you mean? He said, they will change you. They will make you a slave or something. I said, my God. Victor is a liar. <laughs> Sorry? He's a liar. It's not correct. <laughs> yeah, I know. Maybe it's, as I said, this is really, uh, a, it's, yeah, Sarah, you want to say something? I think they, those, uh, like, our grandparents and the ancient uh, generations made these dramatic stories out of frightness. They were uh, f frightened by the darkness and they just imagined it. It's not there. Yeah, very good. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, this is lovely, Sarah. Yeah. You know, it's really, it's our, yeah, Zahra, yeah. There is a known story called Fatat Nazwa al Mashura. And uh, some... uh, uh, wait a minute. Yeah. You say story, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah? some of... and one of the uh, sheikhs make a, a poem for, for this uh, story. And some of them they said uh, it is true, and some uh, some of them said not. Uh, it is uh, only a fiction. But we don't know if it is uh, yeah, any truth or, or not. But is, uh, it is a known uh, a story yeah. and some yeah. uh, in Bath, they teach them th this story in, in, uh, at school. Maybe I have lost connection for a minute. I don't know. I I seem to I seem to have lost the connection for a minute. I think I lost connection for, for a minute. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Yeah, because... Yeah, because, uh, yeah, one here, somebody um, wrote in the chat, Zahra said, if we think we shouldn't blame him because changing can't be easy and his actions and behaviors show his identity. 
Yeah, she, um, you know, um, yeah, you mean, you mean, um, you mean, uh, um, uh, you mean, Yeah, I'm just checking something here. I, I, I'm looking for the um, for the tool of attendance is not is not showing clearly. Anyway, maybe it will come in a minute. Okay, so I was uh, I I think as I said um, I wanted really to highlight this idea about witches and witch hunting. Again, uh, I think to, to show how American society, again, is very, very much, um, you know, uh, into this, and people really believe that. Again, here, um, uh, you know, Jim was, um, you know, saying all this. Notice, niggers would come from all around, uh, all around there and give Jim anything they had just for a sight of that five centerpiece, but they wouldn't touch it because the devil had had his hands on it. Jim was most ruined for a servant because he got stuck up on account of having seen the devil and been rode by witches, you know? Um, as I say, you know, this is really an important thing to, to understand, uh, to see how much Tom and white society and, and and really everybody, if you like, here in American society, they do believe in this uh, funny thing about witches and the devils. As I said, all the stories we have read before, or most of the stories we have read before in by, um, by um, you know, um, um, Washington Irving, in, in, uh, as I said, Rip Van Winkle, or by... Um, Hawthorne, the stories, even his novel, uh, The Scarlet Letter, and all the stories about, um, you know, young Goodman Brown, you know, young Goodman Brown was a very strong uh, text about, about witches. Have you done that last, last term, young, young Goodman Brown by uh, Hawthorne in, in Survey 1, have you? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is it. Here, this is the example and the reason. Notice here, we went, again, he goes on to tell us what happened in the story. We went to a clump of bushes, and Tom made everybody swear to keep the secret, and then showed them a hole in the hill, right, um, right in the thickest part of the bushes. And they, of course, he's telling us in details how they started this um, life living together in the, in the, in the uh, if you like, uh, he said, in, in the outside, in the forests, or, you know, in the um, wilderness, if you like. Um, and, you know, notice he said, then we lit the candles and they crawled in on our hands and knees, we went about 200 yards, and then the cave opened up. Tom poked about amongst the passages and pretty soon sucked under a wall where you wouldn't a, you were, you wouldn't a noticed. Again, you wouldn't a noticed really means you wouldn't have noticed that there was a hole. We went along a narrow place and got into a kind of room all damp and sweaty and cold. And there we stopped. Tom says, now we will all start this band of robbers and call it Tom Sawyer's gang. Everybody that wants to join has got to take an oath and write his name in blood. Again, this is all witch hunting. 
is absolute witch hunting and witchcrafting. It's, you know, it's again, it's exactly, it's exactly like Rip Van Winkle. It's exactly like, um, you know, young Goodman Brown. It's exactly the same thing. And if we believe it or not, but remember, this is again, uh, you know, Mark Twain is reflecting on that. I mean, come on, why, why are we always crazy about that? Why do we have to always do this? As if we have run out of stories, we have run out of plots, we can't have a different plot, you know? So notice here this terrible, to me, I think, I'm, I'm trying here to see why this always uh, terrible insertion or inclusion or you know, always borrowing and relying on or going back to witches and witch hunting and to go into caves, which is really very mythological and very unbelievable. You know, why? Again, this could be a, to me, you know, I thought this is a terrible, a terrible twist or a terrible, well, I don't know. I mean, this is my, my view about the novel. Maybe somebody else may not be happy with me, but, you know, uh, this is what I think. Now, here you can see uh, the idea about taking oath, you know? You know, want to be, to be a loyal, uh, a loyal gangster, you have to take, to have to take an oath, you know, which is very funny. Everybody was willing, so Tom got out a sheet of paper that he had wrote the oath on and read it, it swore everybody to stick to the band and never tell any of the, the secrets. And if anybody done anything to anybody in the band, whichever boy was ordered to kill that person and his family must do it and he mustn't eat and he mustn't sleep till he had killed them and hacked a cross in their breasts. For God's sake, what's this? You know, this is devilish. This is devilish, absolutely devilish. It's like young Goodman Brown. You know, it's this devilish, right? Really, you know, I'm saying here devilish. Tokuson, tokuson shaitania, really, absolutely. Devilish rights, really, here, yeah, right, you know, means taqs. Come on, what's that? Why? You know, <laughs> and as you can see, you know, I really did not highlight this again because this is very ugly and very, again, to notice to hack. To hack means to wreak. Like in, uh, again, to go back to um, Hawthorne's uh, A letter, which is, as we say, the scarlet letter. This one, when it was, uh, you know, put in, in the body of uh, Hester Prynne in her chest here as being adulteress, you know, the woman. I'm sure you've, you've, I've mentioned this to my students in the previous class, in the previous course about, um, again, uh, the scarlet letter when they hatched, they hacked a letter on her, on her chest here. It's the same thing here. He said, a cross, not, not a, an A, but a cross uh, in their breasts. Oh, come on. Which was the sign of the band. And nobody that didn't belong to the band could use that mark. And if he did, not, and if he, did he must be sued. And if he done it, again, he must be killed. And if anybody that belonged to the band told the secrets, he must have his throat cut and then have his carcass burnt up and the ashes scattered all around and his name blotted off of the list with blood and never mentioned again by the gang, but have a curse put on it and he forgot and be forgot forever. Hasbi Allah, what's this? You know, again, <laughs> as I said, maybe again, to see here really what kind of American society we have. 
really absolutely you know there are questions and many many questions here and i think we have many many questions to ask to say come on anyway really you when you read all this we find this really very very amazing uh, now we we see here again more ideas about um, you know miss watson uh, heard this notice Nothing, only robbery and murder, Tom said. But who are we going to rob? Houses or cattle or, you know, they are talking, still talking about the gang. Again, you say, come on, Mark Twain. Come on, Mark Twain. You know, you're talking about robbers and what kind of robbery? And they're still young, young people. You said, what, what robbery and what murder, you know? And he said, we will rob houses or cattle and stuff, stealing cattle and such things ain't robbery. It's burglary. <laughs> burglary, says Tom Sawyer. We ain't burglars. That ain't no sort of style. We are highwaymen. We are highwaymen. And I think this is really very, uh, very funny. Um, as if to say, highwaymen is a good word. You know, highwaymen, you know, it's the same thing. Come on, what's better, to be a robber or highwaymen? You know, it's the same. <laughs> you know, this is really terrible. You say, burglars? We are not burglars? We are not thieves, but we are highwaymen. We stop strangers and carriages on the road. What makes on, sorry, what with masks, with masks on and kill the people and then take their watches and money? Must we always kill the people? Oh, certainly, it's best. Some authorities think different, but mostly it's considered best to kill them except some that you bring to the cave here and keep them till they are ransomed. Ransomed? What's that? I don't know. I mean, look at this kind. I, I just highlighted this kind of dialogue. Again, to say what kind of, what level is this? What example of society uh, we are given here? thing what do you think here really mark twain is giving us he say look this is our western society this is our white society there are robbers burglars highway men they kill people on the road they stop them they take them they kill them and <laughs> why what kind of society is this? For God's sake. And you say always to say it's better to kill them. You know, I think this is terrible. And, and Mark Twain, to be honest, Mark Twain is, is not lying, by the way. Mark Twain is giving us really an example of Western society. An example of how Western society you may say to me, well, yeah, yeah, doctor, our Arabic culture maybe is full of this, maybe was full of this, maybe is still maybe full of this, maybe, but not really, I think, I think, not in the same fashion. Not, not, I am sure, not in the same fashion. And not even the, the same fashion, not not exactly or not even the least near to this. I mean, in any society you may find robbers, in any society you may find burglars, burglars, and you may find way, you know, highway men. But you see, uh, in American society, that, that was terrible and 
it was very fashionable. Why? You may say, why, doctor? Because all American society, originally all white people, came to America to do all kinds of things to defend themselves against strangers. And that's why they had to be always armed with, with you know, armories, if you like, all sorts of armories, in a way, in a way. And that's why you can see the violent society, the terribly violent society you have everywhere in Western American, Western society. And here, really, uh, Mark Twain is giving us this example. And I, I really want you to see this, to say, well, yeah, I mean, this is it. So that's Doctor, why I was, yeah? There were uh, some plans uh, in Bust about uh, when the, when Abraham uh, Lincoln said about the slavery should be free. Uh, uh, and some slaves run away from their masters. So uh, their masters, uh, they, uh, we have North America and South America. So when they run away to, uh, to the another side, uh, they asked some hunters to make plans and بعض الخطط يعني ألغام وكذا to make the, the slaves return back to their uh, to their masters. So maybe he, he is showing this scene here. Yeah, yeah, I like this, yeah. Thank you, yeah, Zahra. Yes. There is a yeah. video, but uh, I, I hope uh, I, can, I can find it about this. There is a, a news talk about the hunting of the slaves. I hope uh, I can find it and I, I will send it in WhatsApp. Yeah, 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 of course. I mean, remember, <laughs> yeah, very good. I, I like that. But you see, um, again, to talk uh, about it now immediately, to say that, yes, uh, there were, you know, groups like this who did this for the sake of preserving the white community to frighten the running away slaves and to catch those running away slaves and to bring them back to their masters. Yes, the result of this, you know, we can study, we can analyze this. They were doing it for their own terrible racial, white racial reasons against the slaves, against poor slaves. And it shows the violence. It shows the real violence that they believe in the real violence that they really practiced, whether against blacks or against others. And remember here, again, the story here we have, how, how um, you know, Huck and Tom helped, helped a slave to run away. It was against the law. And this is, of course, you see here that the, this is the positive idea to see how, you know, these two boys helped a slave to run away instead of bringing him back to his master. And, you know, this is, this is true. But you see, I'm saying here to really to show you another distant idea, which is, you know, rooted in the American society, which is really the violence, the real violence and the, if you like, the terrible uh, attitude towards killing people, the easy, think to say it was easy for them to kill people. And you know, when he said we stand on the road and we stop people and to kill them, whether they are whites or blacks, you know, as a highway man or as highway gang or as a gangster, you know, if you like gangster, you don't differentiate between whom you should rob. You don't differentiate maybe between blacks or whites. And I, and I think, you know, I teach one short story um, by, by um, I teach it to my students in, in, in literature one. I teach this course for, um, for education students called Introduction to Literature One. I teach this short story called A Good Man is Hard to Find. A Good Man is Hard to Find to find by Flannery O'Connor. 
And this story, you have a, you know, two gangsters on the road like this, exactly. They found a family, a white family. Again, the same thing, a white family, except the old mother, she is, you know, um, uh, a black woman. And, you know, he killed, the, you know, I mean, the, the two robbers or the gangsters, they killed everybody. They killed everyone in the story. Um, and again, as I say, it shows the, it shows the violence. You know, this is what I'm saying here. I want you to really understand uh, about that. Again, uh, I think you can see here a lot of uh, uh, things. I did not really want, uh, you know, you please read all this. And, and uh, at the end of this chapter, to notice, then we elected Tom Sawyer as first captain and Joe Harper second captain to the gang. And so started home. I clumped, I clumped up the shed and crept into my window just before day was breaking. My new clothes was all greased up and clayey, and clayey, this is very funny English, clayey means in, full of mud maybe, and I was dog tired. <laughs> Again, this is a nice expression. Um, Now, in chapter three here, as if to say that he went back again, we thought he, he was running away from Moose Watson. So he's coming back again to, you know, because it seems that they ran away to, to meet and to form this gang. And now he, he comes back to Mrs. Watson or to Mrs. Watson and to the, if you like, uh, to... Um, uh, his lady again notice well i got a good going over in the morning from old miss watson on account of my clothes but the widow she didn't scold but only cleaned off the grease and clay and look that i thought i would behave a while if i could now notice again he comes back to tell us how nice this old uh, lady, this old woman, as I said, um, you know, uh, Miss um, the Widow Douglas and her sister, um, you know, old Miss Watson. And notice how he, that she really, you know, takes great care of him and she didn't bother much because she knows that he's a wild boy. Then Miss Watson, she took, again, notice the language he uses, again, the many times he repeats the subject. Miss Watson, she, you see? Miss Watson, she took me to the closet, to the closet and prayed, but nothing came of it. She told me to pray every day and whatever I asked for, I would get it. But it weren't so. <laughs> it weren't so. It wasn't so. I tried it. You see here again to see how he was a wild boy. He was never he was never educated. He was never even religious, and he wouldn't care. Notice, once I got a fish a fish line, but no hooks. It weren't again any good to me without hooks. I tried for the hooks three or four times, but somehow I couldn't make it work. By and by, one day, I asked Miss Watson to try for me, and she said I was a fool. She never told me why, and I couldn't make it out into way, into, sorry, make it out no way. So he goes back to give us more details about that, and I think this is uh, really interesting because we want to see here about more uh, stories about what he wants to say. Again, he said uh, he, he um, is always thinking of running away because he said, I'm sick of this life and I want, to, I want to run away. Notice. I sat down one time back in the woods and had a long think about it. So you see, immediately he was, um, you know, 
uh, he wanted to start this uh, journey of running away with Jim. I says to myself, again, I says, you know, this is very funny English. I says to myself, if a body can get anything they pray for, why don't Deacon win get back the money he lost on pork? <laughs> you know, funny, isn't it? Of course, he's a young boy, you know. People say, if you pray for something, you say, you ask God for it and you pray for it. And then, and then you don't get it. Then <laughs> what's the use? You know, um, really the idea here is funny. And of course, it shows, of course, the childish thinking of, of, of really of, um, of Huck. Because people pray, you know, but you never know when your prayers are answered. You know, you pray, you have to pray to God and God will reward you one day. You maybe, you, you don't know how, you know, you don't know how. But of course, here for 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 really Huck, he he is very funny, irreligious boy, and we understand because he's a he's a young boy, you know. So because he doesn't know anything about religion and about God and about all this, and that's why he he feels, and and we feel he's a wild, uh, crazy boy. Maybe later on he will understand all this spirituality of things he is absolutely here you know wild and he he cares nothing about spirituality and about love uh, you know love and maybe god and all this thing again to say notice here i went out into the woods and turned it over in my mind a long time but i couldn't see no advantage about it except for the other people so at last I reckoned I wouldn't worry about it anymore and just let it go. You know, he's saying about the thinking about God and providence. You know, he said, I was thinking about, you know, where, where is God and is there a God and all this question about God and about providence. And he said, I was thinking and thinking and thinking about it as if to say, again, I think this was a very important idea about this because American people, we found also many examples of that about questioning. And I think I, think I also um, mentioned this to my students in the, in, when we gave, um, in, uh, again, Emily Dickinson, Emily Dickinson's examples in, in survey one, Emily Dickinson wrote a lot about this question of whether, you know, she was a real believer or not. And and even and even Anne Bradstreet, you know, Anne Bradstreet, even the first woman uh, uh, poet, American poet, Anne Bradstreet, and even Emily Dickinson, to some extent, they also questioned the idea about the existence of God and how you see God and how you see providence, and that whether you really believe it or not. And this always hesitation and the questioning about providence is again typical of. Uh, American society and I think here Mark Twain is always again is asking this question and you know posing the question about providence I read this last sentence and that's it for today notice I judged I could see that there was no providence and a poor chap would stand considerable show with the widow's with the widow's providence but if Miss Watson's got him there weren't no help for him anymore I thought all out and reckoned I would belong to the widows if he wanted me, though I couldn't make out how he was, have again, how he was a going to be, again, how he was a going to be any better off than, uh, than, than what he was before, seeing I was so ignorant and so kind of low down and ordinary. Ordinary? <laughs> ordinary means ordinary. Really, ordinary here means ordinary. Again, you know, this question really is very important and I think is one of the key passages here. I will stop here, ladies and gentlemen, and I will continue there. Maybe I will give you only um, maybe six, let me see, because I want to really 
tell you exactly um, we we only need to study um, the first let me see how many pages because I don't want to really worry you about all these pages um, yeah that's it only 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 uh, only 10 chapters only till page 33 because many people ask me how many chapters doctor only 10 chapters okay hello okay doctor okay doctor yeah any any question any question no thanks 